What's going on, guys? Uh, so we're going to be going through the uh, Narnia challenge now. Um, so this one's like rated a 2 out of 10. So it's, it's actually kind of difficult, especially doing it the first time. It, uh, in this one, you really get into a lot of uh, like buffer overflows, and the, you have to kind of really like get to know the memory layout of a process as it's running. Um, so I've done this before, um, but it was definitely a little bit tricky my first time. So let's get going. So first thing I'm gonna do is um, put the first first password in here pretty much all of these start with the same uh, same kind of user password it's just like the the name of the level as the password for the first one um, so we'll put this in our passwords file Oops, not cat echo all right so I got the first one here now I can Log in. By the way, uh, I have this script here, OTW SSH. Um, I've explained it in other videos if you're interested, but it's just a little helper, so I don't have to type out the whole SSH command. If you if you want to know what it is here, you can kind of pause the video and see it there. All right, so Narnia Zero, let's get going. So uh, the way this works is we have uh, directory here called Narnia. Each each level has a source file and a bind, uh, program to run. And as you can see here, each one is runnable by the current user, but it's actually owned by the next level user. So when I run Narnia 0, I'm going to be running it as Narnia 1. And the goal here is usually going to be to trick to trick this program into spawning a shell for me. So then I have a shell with the same permissions that Narnia 1 would have. And I can kind of read the password file for the next for the next level. Because they've made it really easy for us. And all of the passwords are in this directory here. So you know, I can see the password for the first level for my level, but I can't see Narnia One's permission denied. So our goal is going to basically be to read this password so I can log in as the as the next level. Okay, so let's take a look at the source code for the first level. All right, so this is a very basic challenge right here. You you have to you have this buffer here. It's got 20 bytes long and looks like what they're doing here is they're taking in 24 bytes of input from the user so this is pretty uh, most of the challenges aren't going to be this easy this is definitely a warm-up um, so I can kind of show you what's going on here so run the program So the value right now is four one four one four one four one four one. So yeah, this level is really helpful. It's going to actually print out uh, what's going on here. So one thing I like to do with these, so I don't have to like just spam on my keyboard and also. So I can kind of print like some special characters. So if I do, uh, can just use Python. Uh, this dash C flag will just kind of execute this uh, this code in this in these quotes here, and then I can just pass that in to the program itself. So it'll be as if Python controlled my keyboard and was sending these keystrokes to the to the program itself. Um, so you can see here, it passed in uh, 24 Bs. Because I, you know, if I just do this without the pipe, you know, it just prints it straight to the shell. So all it does is it just, instead of printing it to the shell, it prints it into this next program. And it shows up here. Uh, and so you can see that the ASCII code for B is going to be a hexadecimal 42. Uh, so I, I filled up the buffer with the Bs. And then uh, the way the memory is laid out is this: the memory for this guy is like right next to this guy. 
And so it just kind of overwrote into this guy and replaced it with these 42s here. Um, so what I want to do instead is we want to have, we don't care about the first 20 characters, right? And then we want to we want to put the value dead beef in there. So let's try that out. So with Python, if you want to like print a character that's not normally uh, human readable, you know, obviously this is there's no key on my keyboard for this. Uh, this value right here so I have to use like this slash X notation and it's gonna send the literal uh, byte uh, with this with this value if that makes sense uh, oops yeah of course we want to pass it into the program okay so we see what happened here uh, I tried to put dead beef in but it's actually backwards the reason it's backwards is because on this system, it looks like the bytes are stored in what is called little endian mode. And so that means for every four byte unit, which is also called a word, by the way, the, the smallest byte actually goes first. So it's treating this DE as, this, as the smallest byte, which is why it shows up right here. So all I have to do now is reverse the order here. So yeah, I just remember that every four bytes, uh, it, it gets treated in kind of the reverse order. All right, there we go. So we looks like we uh, got the uh, value replaced, but where's our shell? Looks like it should be executing a shell here. And we can actually verify that that's happening with this strace command here. So this is gonna kind of show us all of the different uh, system calls that this program is making. So we should see one that is doing like it. I'll show you. I'm right about that. There we go, right here. So it does execute the shell here, but we can't seem to pass anything to it. It just exits immediately. The reason for that is because it's still reading the input from this Python program. So it, it, we need it to f have Python do its thing and then switch over to reading input from our keyboard so I can actually send commands to the shell here. So I believe the way we can do that is with like a subshell here. So what it's gonna do is, it's gonna kinda take these two commands together as a unit. Python's gonna do its thing. Once Python finishes, it goes to the next command here, which is just a cat um, uh, of the standard input. So then once uh, it reads all the stuff from Python, it's gonna read the stuff from cat, which is reading the stuff from my keyboard. So then I should be able to, mm, yeah, looks like I have access to the to a shell now, and if I run this who am I command, you can see that I'm actually Narnia one. And so then I can read the password like this, and there we go. There's the password for the first level. All right, I will see you guys next time. Thanks for tuning in.